Hello everybody, this is Rich of the Rich Maxwell channel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about drones and photography. So I talk about these two things all the time on here. So if you're into that sort of stuff, please consider subscribing and liking my videos and join me again for, for more videos in future. So this uh, video is all about the Hubson Xeno 2, which has just been announced this week. So it's super exciting to see that the full spec is online on websites such as Gearbest. This video, I just wanted to talk through the Hubson Xeno spec and look at its price and value-wise, whether it's gonna be worth it over other drones that are similar sorts of prices and, and features. And also want to just talk about sort of questions that we might have about the Hudson Zeno 2 that we all want to know the answers to. So yeah, just going to go through things now. Got my laptop here set up, as you'll see. So going to jump onto the laptop now and record the screen for you. I haven't done screen recording before, so I hope this works and you can see what I see now. And so on this screen, I've got the original Hubson Zeno. Uh, this is a listing on Gearbest. So I just wanted to look at the basic spec of that. So the Hubson Zeno original one, as we know, has a one kilometer range, a 4K camera with a gimbal, and no real sort of sensors on the, on the bottom or obstacle avoidance at all. And the range was always a, a problem for people. People didn't really like that it was only one kilometer range and it seemed to be kind of locked in the software at one kilometer, so probably capable of, um, of more than that, but um, for some reason wouldn't uh, allow it in the, the app. It has a 23 minutes flight time, and uh, obviously folds up, f2.2 aperture lens, and it's, yeah, got the obviously GPS, and there's all the image tracking, you can program in uh, sort of flights to, uh, well, sort of um, routes for it to, to fly, and it does take filters, but they're a bit awkward. You have to stick them on the front with a, a whether they're sort of magnetic. Um, so they're not, not fantastic. And there's not a great selection of, uh, of filters out there. Um, and then onto the Hubson Zeno 2. So this is the new listing that we've just seen this week on Gearbest. It's um, very competitively priced at £308. So that's superb for a, a drone that's brand new on the market. So that makes it really appealing. Whereas the Zeno original, I had seen it for about 180, but for some reason it's listed here as 275 with two batteries. Um, so yeah, 308, it's a bit more than the, um, the original, uh, but it packs a, a lot more into the spec. It looks rather impressive. And just gonna go through some of the key differences now. So the range, as I said, on the original Zeno being limited to one kilometer was a bit of a limitation, and it's been upped to six kilometers. So that's superb. So that's um, a great range for the drone. It does 60 frames per second 4K video now. So that's fantastic in itself as well. And what's great is that it does RAW format, whereas the original Xeno only shot JPEG. So that's gonna be really good as uh, shooting in RAW will enable you to bring out a lot more detail in your photos and do a lot more things if you put your photos into a professional editing uh, platform like Lightroom or Photoshop. It just means you've got a lot more color information and depth and dynamic range to kind of play with on there. So you can bring out the detail in shadows and in highlights. So that's gonna be great uh, for myself as a, as, as a photographer, that's a, a real good perk. Um, and then flight time, 33 minutes. So 33 minutes, brackets, windless. So 33 minutes for them will be in optimal conditions, no wind, probably not really flying anywhere, just hovering in one place. So when you're actually using the drone, I would guess realistically we're gonna be looking at sort of 25, 27 minutes maybe, and that'll probably be in good weather if you're, you're flying around and, and cruising around. So yeah, good good battery life then, that's really impressive, and, uh, and as I say, six kilometer range, so that's a big upgrade. Uh, personally, I don't think we need six kilometer range from a, a drone, as the drone code and laws here in the UK say that you need to keep your drone within a line of sight, so, how much is that of a benefit really, realistically? Do you need it? That's what you've got to ask yourself. But 
Um, there's other things that make this a really compelling purchase like the 60 frames per second 4K, 100 megabits per second bit rate. So fantastic bit rate, that's the same as the Mavic Air. So it'd be interesting to see how the video from this compares with the Mavic Air. Um, so that's, uh, that's gonna be one for when the drone is actually in someone's hand to, to test out. And the uh, actual photography uh, sort of modes in it, it appears we've got ISO range going up to 3200, so that's good range to go to get good light, low light photos, but probably gonna be quite grainy and unusable at that sort of ISO level. Um, what will be interesting to see is whether we can adjust the shutter speed on this drone or whether it's going to be locked at whatever the um, the app wants it to be. So it might just be a case that you can adjust the exposure levels like plus one, plus two or whatever, and then it locks in the, the shutter speed. But we'll see, because uh, ideally as a photographer, you want to be able to change your ISO and your, uh, your shutter speed so that you can use a, a low shutter speed if you wanted to do things like um, capture movement in water, kind of get the, the water all smoothed out and get nice reflections. And yeah, so interesting to see what happens with that. Um, with this drone, the original Hubson Zeno, what we were lacking really was any sort of obstacle avoidance sensors or altitude hold sensor. Um, so on this new drone, we have a sensor on the bottom which will help with precision landings and to sort of lock in altitude, ensure that you're not gonna smack the drone into the ground or anything like that. So that's pretty good but doesn't appear to have any front or rear facing obstacle avoidance sensors. It has this little black thing above the, uh, the camera on the drone, which kind of looks like somewhere that could house some sensors. Who knows, perhaps there could be a sensor there and it could just be a case that they need to upgrade the, the firmware in future to unlock its capabilities, but we won't know that until somebody buys it, has it in hand and maybe takes it apart and has a look and see what's, uh, what's actually in there. Um, but that's the, the main differences really. Um, it looks like it's got a bigger sensor. I think the sensor on the Xeno is smaller than that, but let's, let's have a, a look at the spec, see if we can see it here. So the sensor size, does it say? Uh, I can't see it in this description. So yeah, I think it's a bigger sensor though. It's a Sony sensor, so it should be a pretty good camera on this. And um, the remote has obviously been upgraded. It's got massively larger antennas, so obviously that's gonna be contributing to the, the longer range. Uh, looks like it's got metal sticks, so that should give it a nice feel. And then it's got a little display, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Looks like it should display some key information that you need. And also it says that you can fly the drone with just the controller, so you don't technically need to plug in your phone. But obviously if you wanna see what the camera sees, you'll wanna plug your phone in. So you're probably not really gonna to wanna to you know, flight without your, your phone plugged in and all the information that's on the controller is available on your phone screen on the original Xeno. So uh, not a huge benefit really having the, the, all the, uh, the, the screen on the controller. Much rather have obstacle avoidance as I think that was something that the original Xeno lacked and if they got obstacle avoidance on this drone and made it work right then it would be a real competitor to the Mavic drones such as the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. Um, so interesting to see what, what happens there. So if it's a case that that black bit on the front of the drone is a sensor and they can unlock it in firmware then this is going to be a superb buy at £308 when you compare it to the Mavic drones that have obstacle avoidance and cost about seven, 800 quid. So yeah, it looks a, a really impressive drone. So super impressed with the, the spec and excited to see what this drone's like in, in the flesh. Uh, I'm not totally certain whether I'll buy the drone yet. I may do, but I have got a Mavic Air, which I'm really happy with. And I don't see this as, um, as the kind of drone that's gonna really dethrone the Mavic Air as it hasn't got obstacle avoidance and it's not as small. It appears this drone is gonna be quite a heavy drone actually. I think it's 900 grams, uh, the, the weight. So it is gonna be a, a bit of a, a beast of a drone. So yeah, 9150, uh, 0 0.9150 kilograms. So quite a heavy drone, uh, whereas the Mavic Air is about 400 grams. So it's more than twice the weight. So that's something to keep in mind. But it does fold up nicely, again, like the original Xeno. Folds up really nice, goes in your, your camera bag, very nice and portable. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with this drone and see what video footage looks like from it and see how good photos come out from this drone. It looks uh, looks impressive to say the least. And it's quite a, um, that, that if they'd maybe unleashed this about a month ago, then 
people would have probably been more interested in it and probably purchased it for Christmas, but it's probably gonna to be too late now to order this and get it in time for Christmas. So that's a, a real shame. They probably missed it slightly with the timing as uh, so they could have had a, a real a real seller here that could have been competing with the, the Mavic Mini as that's been obviously flying out of the shops everywhere since it's been released as a, an affordable drone just before Christmas. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with this and I hope you find this video useful and uh, interesting. If you're into drones and photography, please do subscribe and join me again for more videos. So hope to see you all again here soon. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you all have a great day. Bye for now.